a little over five months in. Okay. So like she's getting, you know, like we put her down at eight. It's like no sounds until like two thirty, two forty five, and then she'll like be she'll wake up and then want her pacifier or whatever, and then that process can take like three times of getting out of bed. But then she's like back down to like six. Not that there bad, yep. to be honest. Um, not that bad. I, I, no, that's not bad at all. Yeah, like I was really terrified. We had a night nurse for four months, and I was terrified about what was going to happen afterwards. And <laughs> it, it hasn't been. It hasn't. It been transitions bad. pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, man, dude. Uh, thanks for coming on. I guess we'll start rolling now for the for the Let's editors. Do it. Um, so uh, my it, guest today. Light? What? <clears throat> so um my guest today is ron shaw i'm very excited about this show because i know i have more i feel like i have more to learn from ron than just about anybody else that i speak to um i'm sure the audience will agree uh ron is a total beast founder ceo of obvi and he's helping a ton of people like me out which i think is just a very interesting way to navigate your career and we're going to get into that as well um and uh just the breadth of knowledge that this dude has and his understanding of the entire machine and how everything works um which is like a theme that has been resonating with me lately like i've been i've been talking about mr mr beast has been doing a podcast tour mm -hmm. if you listen to this guy and how long he took and how deeply he understands how to create viral content. Like if you ask me, which da Daniel Murray did yesterday, did yesterday on his podcast. He's like, what do you think? What is the advice you would give to a young person? I was like, listen to that Mr. Beast interview and whatever your job is, do what he's doing for the, your job. Whatever the version is, understand that shit better than anybody else. And you will crush and then start expanding the breadth of the parts that you're understanding, right? So like there's the technical right. aspect of your job and then it's like, well, why is my boss telling me to do this? Right, right. And then you'll get to a point where you're like us and you're like building the machines. Like right. it's just a matter of time. Um, anyway, I'm just very impressed with, with every conversation I've ever had with you. So I'm excited about jumping into this. Uh, here's something that I don't know. Um, so you are hungrier and you have like more of a growth mindset than like just about anybody I have conversations with. I'm wildly energized by it. Um, where did all of this come from? Like, is it a growing up thing? Is, you know, if it is, can you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, Adam, thanks for having me. And um, I think I echo exactly what you said about me, which is every time I speak to you, I just, I want to put my, I want to put my phone down and just start thinking because like, you'll just say one line and I'm like, holy shit, he's right. Like, okay, this is the direction, right? So um, uh, I, likewise, I love the energy. And again, thanks for having me on. Um, as for, as for the, the growth piece and then why I think my mind works that way, um, <clears throat> when I initially um, kind of grew up, my dad's been an accountant his whole life. He's been working at Ernst & Young for, uh, he's, he's, he's been there almost 30 years now. He's a partner and has done that route. Um, I was an accounting major. I worked at a big four at Deloitte Consulting. I was supposed to follow that track. Um, and I didn't know anything else existed. Okay. So my first, my first learning of something else existing was me taking a leap of faith and becoming a controller at a startup supplement brand. Okay. And when huge I leap. did that, huge <laughs> leap, huge leap, my dad actually had to come and meet the founders to make sure there's that his son is being handed off to the right group of people. Um, it, it was, it was, it was intense, but the thing was, was when I saw that, and even though I was doing the same kind of work, um, what I learned was there are people that know so much more about everything. And then when I saw that, uh, and, and when you find out that it's actually unlimited, then that race becomes, it's, it's, it's either your mind just gets wired to want that and the chase begins. And, and the, 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 the good and bad part about it is the chase doesn't end. Right. Uh, you can think that'll end and you have some number in your mind or you have some, you know, uh, whatever it may be, uh, some milestone, but it doesn't end there. Uh, that's just the gateway to the next thing. So I loved that factor because that also tells me if it's unlimited for me, it's unlimited for everyone, which means you have an ability to at some point 
catch up to someone that you may look up to and, and catch up to someone that may be light years ahead, but you may kind of be able to course through that. So I just figured like, okay, wait, there, there's this whole new world I have to explore and I have to learn what it takes to explore it. Man, I love that. Another thing, um, I'm having to give speeches at events now, just as part of the yep. game, and I don't know how to do it yet. Every time I get done, people are like, man, I got to help you out with your speaking. Or <laughs> so I was reading uh, Talk Like Ted, and it's this book that I got like five years ago when I was making sales ducks yeah. for my last business, and it's all about narrative. So I was like trying to you know, come up with like a 30-minute speech that has three different stories in it. I was like, I got one story. It's great. It's one that I shared you about like five years ago. This is an idea in your head. But then yep. transitioning my bio into like the statistical stuff, it's like this thing that's going on with these proof guys, the Jasper AI guys that I share my office with, it's incredible. I was looking through our old texts, and this is the theme of you just found out that there's this whole other world that's possible and that yeah. exists. So like I thought I was a guy who was going to create bootstrapped lifestyle businesses my whole life, be super comfortable, under the radar, whatever. Like – at the time these Jasper AI guys started Jasper AI, I had two bootstrap startups that were both like three million a year, million and a half bottom line. I was like, Dave, like they were yeah. they were sucking wind with proof. They were like running out of money, like they're about to sell it for two million dollars or something. I was like, Dave, like, if you fire everybody, get rid of this expensive office and then start one or two more of these things, you guys are gonna be printing money. It's gonna be amazing. This guy <laughs> Sends me one text on like December 20th. He's like, hey, we got early access to GTP3. And at the time, we thought that there was like a novelty of like kind of like nerds making technology that they didn't know how to sell and us making sure. UI in a marketing engine because that was kind of what I had done with Get Emails first. And he's like, I think this is a Get Emails. Seven days later, sends me a, a Stripe receipt. He's like, 100 bucks, first customer. Hopefully, this is my, my Get Emails, right? So like – the bar wow. for us was this business yeah. that, by the way, at the time I hated. It was 267K MRR. Yeah. Dave got to 50 million in a year. 14 months after that text, he raised 125 million, a $1.5 billion valuation. And literally, I fucking watched him do it. And like, I. That's insane. We were such close peer. Like, like think about how close yep. of a peer you are at that point, right? Like, yep. I'm like, dude, like, come up here, come up here. And then he's yep. like, bro. Bro, come up <laughs> yeah. here. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, like, that's... He, like, I couldn't, it's like this idea of mindset in like, yeah. like another thing Mr. B said in this podcast, which I love, he's like, he, they all ask him, they're like, what recommendation would you make for someone wanting to be a YouTuber? And he's like, you got to be extremely judicious about who you hang out with because yeah, you need yeah. friends that will tell you for if sure. your content sucks. Right. Exactly. And that, yep. a different version of that for us, I think, is like, I want to be around people thinking bigger. I want to be around people playing bigger. Like, that's right. I just can't tell you. It's like so seductive to think about this idea of like a cash flowing business. And I'm like living in Aspen and like whatever. Right. Uh, I will tell you, I'm going as hard as I fucking can right now. And it is so much more invigorating than like. Oh, yeah cruising oh, yeah. in this lifestyle business, you know, making a couple million, but whatever, like, a couple days. <laughs> dude, like, like it's, it, but, but it's like, not like I'm working around the, it's not like I'm a slave to this thing. It's giving right. energy right. to my family life. Like I'm right. so excited when I wake up every day and yeah. like, I just want other people to have that, you know? Uh, and like the crazy thing is on. like, I didn't know that it was possible for me. You know, right. it's, right. it's like, it's a fucking yeah. Tony Robbins conversation we're having or something like this, you know, but like, it's <laughs> it, real. It's, it's it, like, it's I so watched real. it. It's so real. I watched it happen so fast. Like, you know, yeah. I was showing my wife the office that we're moving into on South Lamar. And it's one of these things like we work the show. Like you would not even yeah. believe this place. These guys are moving into really? And Dave just likes having me around. He's like, dude, I'll barely charge you anything. Just come along. So yeah. like. She's like flipping through this office. She's like, I cannot believe how much these guys' lives has changed. Like, <laughs> they were like, yeah. they were like down and out two years ago. You know. Isn't that anyway, that that's just like I'm gonna be telling that story to everybody because I think it's like that's so I cool. would not have believed it would not have changed my life unless I was sitting in the same room with these guys. I could have heard it on a podcast, and I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought it applied to me. Yeah. But I watched this guy who was more yeah. stuck than I was at the same spot do yeah. it and now i'm doing it 
Like, right. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, right. The, there's, like there's, it's so it's, wild. Like, it's so fascinating. It's fascinating too because it's just the one comment to, to what you said too is like, and this, I always think about this when like, I mean, it's usually if you're on offline hours when you're thinking about this, but like, I always think about if if I didn't meet this guy in this random elevator that was looking for a controller, okay, and and you fast forward to today, right? And I'm like, wait, I was just supposed to be an accountant. That's yeah. what I was supposed to be, okay. And uh, and a CPA, and and now I'm I'm whoever I am, right? And I'm like, what about all the people that aren't getting a random experience thrown at them, right? Yeah. Could there be buried talent that has way further potential of expiration than even you or I have had, right? And you always think about it's that moment where you ran into something that kind of broke the trajectory of what you were going to do. And it, and it's something so measly sometimes, you don't even give it much thought, but that moment changed everything. So, and it's like, how many more moments can we create for others to, to change? And I think that's what tech is doing, you know, uh, what totally. you're doing. And then, so, yeah. I mean, that, that I think is like the, so like this, this content creation stuff, which you work in public, founder brand, whatever you want to call it, we both believe in deeply. Um, <clears throat> from my perspective, I just think it's like, it's like the problem that I see for, uh, not the problem, like the, the, what will make our company accelerate the most is if we h keep hiring better and better people. Like, I can't believe okay. the people that are signing up to work for, I literally just like, I'm like, I can't believe this guy wants to spend his time working on this project Yeah, because it's right. just like so different than it was two years ago or whatever. Um, so like, I think the founder brand stuff, at least on LinkedIn is great for that. Uh, like, I think that like when you're crushing it, revealing your financials is just spellbinding for people. Like literally. So I had Tommy, you know, hit my LinkedIn post with that spreadsheet. I of saw our, that. I and, love and, it. And, and like, I literally had three people saying like, I will work for you. Like, <laughs> like, like as yeah. a direct message, yeah. like what, what openings do you have? Like, yeah. which is amazing. And you know, th there's this idea that like, Oh, like what about your competitors? What about, the I just think it's like, if you did it and you saw the effect of it in like the yeah. vibrations it has through like recruiting and like, if you needed money mm -hmm. from investors or whatever. And like, I feel like everybody would do it. And then there's this last part, which we're talking about, which is like, if you can just like, it changes somebody's life so much to hear stories really like that. If you can, it if really you can just does. like, like, okay, let's say like, I don't know, 500 people listen to this podcast or whatever in the next week. Like if one of them is like, right. I, I can relate to that Dave and Adam story. Like yeah. I'm going to just figure out how to go bigger. Right. Like, mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen in a day. Like it took me like kind of six months from this conversation I had with Dave to actually like Right. really be gunning it with all the people in place. But um, that's, that's, that's a benefit that I think is just, it, it's what keeps you going, me yes. at least, right? Like, yes, 100%. And what are you, so, so tell me about your, tell me about Obvi. <clears throat> so idea yeah. MVP, first 100 customers. Absolutely. Um, idea was we've been, we, we, prior to this, myself and my two co-founders, we actually ran a marketing agency. Um, and, uh, my, myself and my two co-founders, we actually started at that company. I told you I became a controller at, yeah. we were, us three were employees there. Okay. And we turned into best friends, best men at each other's weddings. Um, and so we're trying to break the stigma of working with your best friends cause we've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, yeah. so I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, we, uh, we were running a marketing agency for about five years called ghost three media focused around helping, you know, uh, digitally native brands grow their footprint, um, <clears throat> by building websites running paid media and branding and design. Um, did that for five years and we said, all right, we've built so many seven to eight figure brands for others. Um, let's extract everything we learned to do and learn not to do and apply it and basically see if we can create a thesis out of this, right? And really what it was, what Obvi was, was can we apply everything to do and not to do and actually make something out of it? So first thing was, was okay. So, so literally this. it was basically like an experiment. It is, it, 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 and it's still it. It's still it. Um, <laughs> it was a fully experiment. Um, yeah. And what we did was was first thing was when we we said we know health and wellness and supplements the most. Let's stay in that category. Okay, so staying in what you know best and perfecting it. First lesson. Second lesson was okay. You cannot 
create a product that is not disruptive. Okay, so how are we going to disrupt this supplement market? So we looked at collagen, which was had the highest Google trend, right? So in the right direction. Um, and then we said, well, what's disruptive about collagen? You know, collagen is actually a very utilitarian product. It's, a, it's an unflavored product. You're supposed to throw in a milkshake and you forget about it. You take it because it's good for your hair, skin, nails, and joints. So we looked at that and said, wait, if it's so good for your hair, skin, hair, skin nail, and joints, why can't it be a standalone product that people are enjoying taking, like whey protein, right? Or, or your matcha tea. Like people are excited about taking these products. So he said, what if we did flavored collagen that actually tasted delicious, gave you nostalgic reasoning of taking it, and you actually feel the benefits? So he said, all right, cool. This could be something disruptive. No one's doing flavored collagen. Let's get to R&D, right? So that was the second part. Um, when we came out with the first two flavors, we had perfected a fruity cereal and a cocoa cereal. Tastes like the Fruit Loops and a Cocoa Puffs milk with uh, cereal left over. And we said, all right, this is it. This is going to hit the people. Um, and the first thing we did, day one, uh, we created a really good website because that's what our background was. Um, we got really good photography done. And we started running Facebook ads from day one. It's, it's what we knew, right? And it's, it's, it's all we knew. We didn't go the whole route of let's build organic. Let's, you know, let's try this. Let's try. We ran ads from literally 1201 midnight till, uh, which was June 1st, the start of the brand, um, till literally seconds ago, we're still running ads, right? And then that's, that was our, our, our goal. And our main focus was stop making collagen boring and uh, start enjoying it. And uh, now about, you know, $40 million in revenue later, I think we were able to prove the concept at least. For sure. Um, and then what about, what was the work in public always the plan there? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the thing we wanted to give back while kind of conducting this experiment was when we started and when we saw people building brands, everything was uberly secret uh, secretive. Like it was like, Oh my God, you figured something out on Facebook ads. Don't let anyone find out as if the algorithm is so small that some one other person finding out is going to kill it. Right. Yeah. Um, and we were just like, wait, if we actually start sharing, right. Every detail about our brand building, do you think somebody else will? Right. And not that we fostered this, this, this has been around, but we wanted to bring it out to a little bit more in the social space. So whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, we just started sharing everything. Like, hit, hell, we just hit our first $100,000 a month. Oh, we just hit a half a million dollar a month, et cetera. And it turned into where people were like, oh shit, I'm craving an update, right? Like, yeah. it's been a while, like what's going on? And what people were able to extract, at least from when, we're, when we've been building public, was I think mistakes and learnings from how we were able to take certain steps. But also, I think it made other people feel like it's okay to share too. Yep. Um, and so I think that was our, our goal. And I think, uh, I think no matter what business I'm part of or, or, or what I do in the future, I'll always want to build in public. And like, have you seen any, has it helped you in recruiting? You know what I mean? Like, like all those other, did you see mm -hmm. that other stuff that I'm seeing or is it yeah. like, <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, I think, I think what we, so the, actually I'll give you the other side of it is I think. Um, when we started building in public, we had wins like this, okay, um, call yeah. it hockey stick or whatever. I think because we were layered with so many wins, we maybe sometimes made people feel intimidated. Yeah. So there were a lot of people looking into the window, mm. but very few wanted to come through the door because they're like, holy shit, like, I don't know if like I can... I can level up to this, right? Right. Um, and this is back in 2019, 2020. And so I believe post pandemic though, okay. Um, even first year into the pandemic, I think the, I think people's mentality of like, fuck it, let me try. Right. Like maybe I can be good enough for this became more comfortable. And so building in public since pandemic, um, kind of really kind of hit, I feel like that's where it's opened a lot of doors for us where people have just kind of flooded the gates opportunities have come through the door and i think it's also mentality of people has changed though yeah in what way i think it's i think it's there is not so much to lose by right. trying yeah. whereas before it was like holy shit i gotta go interview here i gotta go in person to this office i gotta do do this and yeah, what if my yeah. manager finds out now it's like 
shit, I know some people who are doing three full-time jobs, <laughs> right? And like making it work somehow, right? right? And it's like, um, I think it's just, I think there's comfort and there's accessibility. And then there's on the other side, as a, as a business owner, I think we are constantly craving talent, right? It's like, all right, I, I have a growth mindset. I want talent. And you're willing to scrape through talent right now because the other thing is, is, is you're also able to say, hey, you just, this didn't work out in a few months. Sorry, right? You do, this whole idea of what used to be the salary mindset, which is, damn, I'm hiring this person for 150 grand, right? Yeah. Like that, how am I going to get, it's, it's more like, you know, I'm hiring this person for 12 grand, right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, I can see if after 36 grand, if this person's going to be worth it. So totally. I think there's a whole dynamic shift. Um, and then mentally, I think people are just open to the accessibility they've gotten in their lives now. Yeah. So you are super connected and I'm just very, um, you know, I, I sell into the Shopify ecosystem. You kind of provide services to some other vendors like me. I, I, first of all, I love this ecosystem because I find the founders to be like us, yep. you know, especially when you're selling in the Shopify plus stores, it's like, that's dude, right. like you're a special person if you made it to Shopify plus. <laughs> and, and like yeah. generally, I feel like <clears throat> the products are being created to improve the world. You know what I right. mean? Like everybody's trying to like get some liquidity event for their future family or current family, right? It's like it's, it's a, just a yep. very similar mindset between the brands, the vendors, and the agencies. And I feel like everybody wants everybody else to succeed. What right. a great ecosystem to be a part of, it's and it's super, it's super tight knit, and my observation, which I just started learning about this literally a month and a half ago, is influence is concentrated in very few hands, <laughs> which is wild, you know? <laughs> um, so I want to ask you two questions. The first one, you are incredibly tightly networked with these influential people. Did you, is, was that intentional? And if so, is there tactical stuff behind it that people should be doing? Start there. Yeah, um, I, I would be lying to you if it was intentional. Um, I, I think the intention was was that if I'm sharing information, um, I'm hoping that I'm able to also extract information. Yeah. Okay? And so that barter, whether it was public or behind a wall of DMs, right? That barter started to become stronger and stronger. It was like, hey, I see you're doing this. Here's what's working for me. Maybe we can jam, right? And uh, the amount of jamming that I did in 2020 and 2021 was a lot, right? Yeah. Which was just, I'm going to give you my time, right? Let's do it. Um, and I think it turned into like, okay, now I have this person in my back door. So whether they're going to engage with me or like support me, I got this person, okay? So I think that was like step one of just giving unlimited amount of time to to people who are who could be valuable or could not be, right? You right. can't look at the number of followers they have and think that they have value. I, have, I, I know people who have no presence on social that are some of the most strongest influential people. Right, right. Um, that's, that, and so, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and Can so I just I ask you one, one, one yeah. real quick question? So, so this started with your building in public effort, like the, 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 the increase. So another benefit that I didn't even highlight, like, yeah. which I haven't really seen it, but like, Chase Diamond talks about this all the time. Like he had like uh, the Thirty Seven Signals guy who's been an idol for mine. He's like, dude, he like wrote me the other day and said he loves my content. Right? Like, it's like yep. the more you produce, these people who are actually the daddies mm -hmm. at it, like yep. they like your yep. shit. You know, they do. Uh, they do. Yeah, that, that's uh, the biggest part. Yeah, that's the biggest part. Um, I remember I was um, hunting around and talking to some VCs, and this is when it hit me um, because I was just looking at like, hey, potentially raising some capital for Obvi. And I realized there were VCs that were saying, hey, I, I, I follow your content on LinkedIn, yeah. right? And I'm just like, huh, I've never seen you like it. I've never seen right. you comment on it, but they follow it, right? So it started hitting me like, okay, wait, there's the reach, that number reach where it says like how many people saw it or impressions. Um, that is probably the most powerful statistic. More than your engagement, more than comments or shares, the most powerful statistic is how many people can see it. And I think what I realized was, okay, if I start getting more content out there, right, whether it's on Twitter or LinkedIn or both, 
would I be able to get more eyeballs on me? And then the, the, the second layer to it was that's going to create a lot of inbound of people who want to talk to you and people who want to spend time with you. How do you create layers of making sure that now that infinite time that you are willing to give can start becoming targeted? Um, right. So there's a couple things I did was uh, I joined MentorPass, which I think was phenomenal for me because I was able to put a price to my timing, right? Um, for the people who are like, I want to pick your brain. Yeah. Okay. And then there were people who were like scouting, which is like, hey, like I have, you know, XYZ brands I work with or hey, I have XYZ SaaS companies I work with. Let's let's maybe connect some dots here. Right. And I love those people because now like, all right, cool. Let me add you to my pool. When an opportunity comes, I'm going to plug out. Yeah. Right. Um, and I kept building that. And I, and, I, and I think one of the things I did was I have this. It's in my it's in my Apple notes. OK. Um, it's just people who can connect. Okay? Right. Just their names and their email or their handle. Okay. And I and I and it feels like like, you know, when you have to kind of make a call and yeah. it's like, all right, let me go make a few calls. And I there are people that I just tap into now, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that built though, because of putting the content out there and starting to weed out my conversations as I but I started with, hey, I'm gonna talk to everyone. Yeah. Um, and so I think it again was not intentional. But what I learned was there is there is this, there is a huge desire out there for people to connect and network, but not just to for free knowledge and information. They want opportunities, right? So what I started doing was with this with this group of people that I, I keep building on is I'm going to feed them opportunities. I want nothing in return, right? Yeah. I um, I don't care if you make ten grand off of this. I, I don't care. Right. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to feed you opportunities. Make me look good. Right? right. That's my only thing is reputation. So I think it started becoming one of those things. And it's like now I know there's at least 20 to 30 people that I've gotten some life changing opportunities to. And it's like, all right, cool. One day it'll come around. And if it doesn't, at least reputation was was preserved. So that I think that's how it's kind of domino affected. I just like love so much about this. And I, so like. Back to what you – here's what I'm trying to do. I had this guy – I can't wait till this episode comes out. The last guy I interviewed his name is John Kronstadt, and he was the president of Kajabi, basically Shopify for info products, from 6 yeah. million ARR to 100 million ARR over six years. Crazy. And, and it started as – it was a bootstrapped lifestyle business when he joined it, and then it ended up with Tiger putting $200 million in it at $2 billion valuation. This guy's perspective – on so many things is so incredible for people who are, have not taken VC yet because like he just, they went through, like they had this moment where they were looking at it and they're like, this could be so much bigger. And then all of this discussion about like the, the thrill of giving it everything you got or whatever, incredible. But this guy, I became interested in him because I was at 6 million ARR when I heard him talk at War Room and they asked him, what is the one thing that you would advise people to do um, if they're going to go on this path that Kajabi went on? <clears throat> He's like, I would start posting on LinkedIn daily today about what it's like to work for your company. And I got to, I got to dig into that with him. And he's like, look, man, all of this, you know, great resignation, employee, like disengagement, like even people having several jobs, whatever. He's like, he's like, you know what fixes all of that? He's like, picture watching Yellowstone and like, he, he's like, you know what doesn't fix that? The executives writing mission statements or whatever, values, vision, all that right. shit. He's like, marginally better is if the employees contribute, but it's still something that the executives, that doesn't even work because it's like right. two people compromising. So it's like not even like strong beliefs out of either side. He's like, you know what fucking works? He's like you kind of know what it's like to work on John Dutton's ranch if you watched Yellowstone for however many seasons it was, right? right that right. guy showed you what it was like to be inside of his life. He's like, if you can create that on LinkedIn, you've won the game because people are gonna raise their hand and be like, I want that. And when they opt well in, when you have a pull system for recruiting, he's like, I think employee engagement is like through the roof. Um, yeah. Because people know exactly what they're getting into, and they are like, "I want to be associated with that." So, like, yeah. that's this 
it's this inbound thing that you're talking about. I'm trying to do a big secondary deal at like a unicorn valuation in like a year. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm doing the same thing with investors, right? It's like I'm putting together a list of people who are capable of doing that deal. I'm reaching out to them and saying, I'm going to, A, disclose an insane amount of financial and operational information over an email once a month. Like, you won't even believe it. I'm going to give you an updated model of my progress toward 50 million error. B, I'm making a TV show called Billion Dollar Challenge. So, like, you can literally watch a 10-minute episode every week. And then C, if you're not interested in a year, opt out. But like, <laughs> but, but like they, that will have so, you know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah, like this whole 100%. other, like when the deal comes around to be done, there will be hardly any work to do because like right. these deals <laughs> the are about trust anyway. Like, like they're right. going to know me, how I operate my team, like so well. Right. Um, so like, that's another benefit. I think of this, like, of this, like content creation, work in public, like whatever, um, it's just so no. powerful. And, and it just it, seems like on LinkedIn, especially there's like there's stat. It's like only 1% of people are creating content or whatever. Um, yeah. you know, it's, the, it's I, I, I think that the, the one piece that I think people forget though, is it's, it's so hard to be consistent. Totally. Like your consistency is it, it's not, it's not, it's not something that is a nice to have. It is actually the lead off in the formula. Yeah. Like you don't, don't do this if the first thing you don't commit to is consistency because you're going to you're going to see first of all peaks and valleys in it but regardless you have to stay constant in output and if you don't stay constant in output um the whole objective of this um you will never actually fit into the ecosystem um because the ecosystem is 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 fueled through consistency so i think that's the only thing that i see a lot of people do like They'll try something or start something, and it's just like, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop because I'm getting back to work, and it's like, right. no, this is this is also work. This is work. Um, the, you know, so, it, it's oh my god, I have the best quote to say right now. So, I want to talk about after I share this one thought, I want to talk about tactics that we can recommend for consistency. I'll tell you what I'm doing and share what yeah. you're doing because I think that's super valuable. Like. For me, it took me forever to get over the hump of committing to this. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, dude, every day I see another soft, ben- you know, unquantifiable benefit of this, right? Yeah. So, like, um, I I was experimenting with some paid ads, uh, and it just, you know, we're going after such a small slice of the world that like targeting people on social media with ads and run- it's it's not the way to do it. Um, right. I think everything else I'm doing is going to work a lot better. However, the guy that was running these ads for me is a genius. I love this dude. I'm going to figure out a way to work with him in the future. It's the guy who runs paid ads for this influencer called Ryan Pineda, among many other things. He's a real estate guy. And then the, the whole time this guy was doing it, he's like, I think you should be building organic audience because the statement that you make, I got to 13 million ARR with six people in two years is insane. He's like, every person who has a business is going to hear that. And they're going to think I have less revenue. I have more people. So like you should just, and I'm like, what does that even mean? Right? Like how do what, you know, like I, I had, I had, I was making, I had made zero posts over the last, you know, 10 years of my life six months ago. Right. And now I'm doing 30 a week or something like that. So like, I'm like, he's like, I'll connect you to Ryan's organic guy. Just talk to him. Yeah. And this guy is so fucking cool. He's so amazing. So like, I'm like, blah, 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 blah. He's like, stop. He's like, what I hear you asking me is, is this going to be worth it? Right. Right? Cause like I had this feeling I was like, I was doing a podcast, one work in public a week. And then Tommy was taking that and putting two LinkedIn posts a day. This guy was like, if you just spent like one more hour a week and were able to crank out a work in public every day, if you had the right content manager and the right video editor, you could be literally everywhere. Think about that. And he's like, the question that you're asking, will this be worth it? And I love this quote. He's like, I don't know what exactly it's going to do for you in your given situation. But what I can promise you is it's going to do way more than anything else you could do. So, funny. And he's like, I know it because <laughs> so I've seen it happen over and over and over again. 
Yeah. And he's like, this will slowly become what you spend all your time on because it is the most valuable thing that you can be creating, you know? So well like, I, I just well see said. like, and I mean, I, I like it, like, you know, just the way yeah, you yeah. said it, it, you know, like, it's just eats like, at you. Yeah, 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 I'm just like, like I'm just yeah. like, motherfucker, you are right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, like I need to like <laughs> yeah, hire, yeah. like figure out how to yep. get everybody else doing all this. And, and like, cause the stuff that, and, and I mean, this might be a little bit different if you're like a 20 year old and you just graduated college, but like, dude, like I've been banging my head against the wall for 10 years it, yeah. flat. And then all of a sudden it's vertical, right? Like yep. there is so much that I can talk about that is so valuable right. to other people right. in the game. And like, I don't even know what's in here and I just keep pulling it out. Right. So like, let's move into tactics, right? Like the first, the problem that I had was I, you know, and to some extent, I still have this problem. Like video is a very easy thing for me to create fluidly, but like mm -hmm. our audience is like LinkedIn and Twitter, which are not really right. video native platforms. That's Thankfully, right. I have a lot of free cash in my business. I can hire Tommy for four grand a month to take right. my videos and make them text. So like, here's my routine. Um, I'm now making a daily work in public. And I haven't even started with the show yet. The first interview is today, but like, okay. I'm going to just tell you exactly how I do these daily work in publics. So I open a spreadsheet and then, um, a guy who was like talking to me about how to make them effective. He's like, do a hook, tell a story, give me three lessons, a soft CTA, and then summarize it in one sentence. Mm -hmm. So that's the format that I'm making these little three minute videos. And they're, they're, they're actually getting posted to the retention.com uh, company page and they're getting a lot yep. of views. So you're getting like a thousand views. It's great. Are you doing it's, reels and tick, are you doing reels and TikTok? So, so I'm not doing that yet. I'm going to, okay. cause I didn't want to do that without the proper formatting and editing, which Correct. your guys are going to help me with. Correct. Correct. So, but, but just, I, I wanted to just get in the rhythm of creating the, getting in the flow of creating the information. So now I'm to the point where I can basically take an hour during the week and do five hooks, stories, lessons, CTAs, and yep. then it, it only takes me like an hour and a half or two hours to come in my office. I have this whole setup now and I have a teleprompter screen and I can put the story on top of the teleprompter. And then I use these little whiteboards and I yep. put the lessons or whatever and I flip through them. Right. And I can bang out five videos in an hour and a half. So like it's incredible. That's, that's three total hours. I try to yep. be three or I do one podcast like this. I try to be like three or four ahead. So if I'm traveling, I'll do two or three that week and whatever. And honestly, dude, like it doesn't feel like much. Like I have Monday morning walled off for content creation. Sometimes like my wife has a book club on Sunday night. I'll come in on Sunday night and do it. But like with that amount of content, it fuels Mason writing my newsletter two times a week, Tommy doing uh, LinkedIn and LinkedIn. Twitter. He'll do a thread a yep. week. And then I think he should be doing way more Twitter, but like whatever, um, that's just going to come with time. But like, that's my strategy. It's like this format of a three minute video that hopefully will be actually in a video native format on the right platform soon. But like, I, right. it was just getting a muscle, like it's powering everything else. And it's right. a super efficient way to do it if you can chunk it like that. So that's, right. that's what I do. What about you? That's solid. Uh, <coughs> I, 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 I wish I was that robust. Um, so my, my piece is, um, so I have my podcast to chew on this, right? Um, which I have to talk to you about coming on too. Um, but um, the, 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 the concept uh, where there was obviously just to, to create a, a podcast that's more digestible. Um, that gives me the ability to get about two posts a week to just curate and, 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 and post about. So, I believe that posting video is possible on something like a LinkedIn and Twitter, even even more often than not, only because if you partner it with the right thread, people like the kind of offline and online experience of, of sound and, and text, uh, at yeah. least from at least from the engagement I've seen. So that so so the, the first thing I, I think before I even jump into this is like needing material is is the the, the start of this race, right? It's like you need to be doing not something impactful, but you need to be doing something, right? You yeah. can't just start with nothing. So I think material starts for me on, on one pillar is my podcast, being able to really break down different ways to different lessons and, and different things we've learned from our business and what, what other people should do. Um, the second part is, is um, my day is broken up. Um, I know a lot of people have different methodologies of how they conduct their day. 
my entire day is so calendared to the point where my calendar itself tells me what to do during a free block. So like 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. every single day, it's blocked off for retention. Not not retention.com, but retention.com is a big part of that now. But it's to just focus on retention in my company. Yeah. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., it's heavily focused on on me time to see if I can curate some content for that week, right? Um, and then I have a block from 5 to 6 p.m. that's focused on actually doing my mentor pass calls, right? So that's the only hour you can book me on mentor pass, right? And then like midday, I think it's like 12 to 1 where I'm like trying to refuel my energy. I'm actually consuming content because if you don't keep learning, right, yep. then, then you're also just in your own ecosystem just spinning a wheel. So I'm consuming content while I'm having lunch or something like that. Um, and so my calendar is my to-do list. I don't have a calendar and then a to-do list. And I think that's been the most powerful tactic for me because we get so caught up in what we need to do, but we run out of the time to do it. Sure. Right? I mean, and you, you so, put a little infant in there and you're just screwed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly. We're both that, feeling the pain of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that, 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 that piece is, is a complete X factor. And so like what I, I think my largest tactic was completely getting rid of the to-do list. Yeah. I don't care if you're writing it. I don't care if you're using Notion. Whatever you're using, in my mind, it's, it is useless because you'll never get through it and you're going to rewrite it and you're going to keep working through it unless you're some animal in, in yeah. complete optimization in your life. Um, so what I did was my calendar, which is what I live by because I can't reschedule stuff, right? That's, that's, what I can do is cross off something on my task list and say, I'll do it tomorrow, yeah. okay? But what I can't do is reschedule anything. So I was like, wait, if I'm actually a slave to my calendar, right? Let my let the calendar drive everything I need to do. So even when I have to post a tweet, it's it's a 30 minute block, which requires me to curate and post that tweet in my calendar. Right. Um, and I and so I, I think that has been probably my strongest tactic was everything is going to live and breathe by this to the point where I have to wake up at 630 a.m. to feed my son. That's in my calendar. Yeah. Right now, yeah. if he wakes up at 6 a.m., that's that throws my calendar off. But there are going to be things that come up. So that's been really, really helpful for me. Um, and then on top of that, I think the, the last piece I'll say is, is like on the content curation end, right? Like in terms of what am I putting out? I think the biggest piece is outside of like the, the, the podcast posts, the biggest piece around what I want to put out is I literally want the, the, the main objective is somebody reads my posts and they say, oh, shit, I didn't know that. Right. And so I, one thing that even if I'm writing 90% of it being fluff, is there at least 10% that someone is going to say, oh, shit, I didn't know that. And yeah. if I don't, if I, even if I write the whole post or curate the whole thread and I don't walk away saying, wait, I don't know where that moment's going to be for someone, I don't post it. Yeah. So that's like my like lead off. Barometer, and, uh, yeah. Per, exactly. The like, bar, the like bar you got to get over. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, look, different tactics, but like, I think that if you were listening to this, you would say the the common thread between what I said about my content creation and yours is that it gets prioritized, like yes. systematically, yeah. right? Like exactly. I have built this machine that does it and like your machine is your calendar, but like it gets done, like it gets done and it's like, there's no exceptions. It gets done. Right. Um, Cool. So I want to ask you, you're working on a ton of stuff. I mean, I imagine it's, it's carryover skill from your agency days, but, um, I talk like use a calendar, you live by it, but like, <clears throat> how do you choose? How do you get, I mean, well, we've touched this already. Like you created this inbound machine, right? How do you vet projects? Why'd you want to work with me for instance, versus yeah. like somebody else? <clears throat> um, I, I, I actually care less about what you're doing. I care more about who's doing it. Um, like, I'll give you another example. Um, like when I met um, the founder of Final Loop, which is a, a AI driven automated bookkeeping system, right? I didn't even ask him what his product was. I just let him talk and just, I wanted to hear where, how far his vision was going for something. Yeah. And when you, when you listen to someone's end vision, it tells you if one, if they're, they're, they're talking to you because they're stuck or they're talking to you because it's going to be an explosive machine. Right. Right. And I want to be on explosive machines. 
Um, I can help people who are stuck, but there is a time and place for that. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like my vetting process is purely to the person I'm talking to. And if I feel like it sounds weird because it sounds romantic, but if you feel a tingly feeling, like if you feel like, oh shit, like I am, there's no way I'm not being part of this. Right. Yeah. That's like, that's the vet, right? That's like, okay, that's, that's what you're feeling now powered through. I think the next step is, okay, do you actually have something viable? That's 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 gonna take you there, right? Um, or are you smoking mirrors? I think that's when you go in and say, okay, well, how how big is the business? This and that. But like for me, when I spoke to you, it was it was it could you could be doing anything, right? But the the vision you had, you never talked about, and and it's not because you've you've had no challenges. But in in our first conversation, you never talked about the challenges you're facing right now. You talked about all the opportunities and how you want to conquer them. And that's almost 90% of our conversations, right? Yeah. We'll have challenges because we're in negotiations with something or blah, 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 right? right? But, but if, if 90 to <laughs> almost all of your conversation is opportunity, then that's when you know you can make a difference. Because yeah. um, otherwise, you're going to become an employee to the system. And I don't, I don't look for that opportunity. So um, that's, that for me, I just feel like you, you, just, you, you know it from the founder. That's yeah, the founder. And, and the, <clears throat> this is something I've talked about also. Like, everything is changing for me personally very quickly. It's like yep. I all of a sudden became a hot girl or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, like after years, right? Like, right. like I can say what I'm doing, and yep. like I see it in people's faces. They just like want to be associated with it. I feel so grateful for this. Like, I don't know. It, it's there was no magic bullet. It was just a combination of everything that happened in the last ten years. Finally, all came together. Santosh is this my he's transitioning to our COO. He is the the key to to the the trajectory in finding that guy has changed literally everything. One thing that he says he's been involved in like three other situations like this one. Like Zoom Info was the one that everybody knows about. Mm -hmm. He joined at eight million ARR. He left two years later at a hundred million ARR. Um, and he was like the growth architect of it. And he's like, when you're in one of these situations and everything is right, like the team is right, the product is right, the time is right, the pricing is right. He's like, every single door you open, there is like a glowing opportunity behind it. It's, there, there is no stuck because it's just this crazy thing that happens where only opportunity is coming your way. Whereas right. like... And he's like, I've been involved in a lot of businesses that weren't in that predicament. And it's like, yeah. you know, you just have to push hard. Like, he's like these situations like where you're just getting pulled. So, and, and I think it's, you know, he also has this thing. He's like, I think our, our sort of vision and values should be centered around accelerating the personal and professional growth of everyone working on it before mm -hmm. the customers. <clears throat> he's like, we're in a unique environment where... If you think about your career as a product, being tied to this will elevate your status and your value as a product more than anything else. And then it's impossible to work inside our organization and not just be dumbfounded by the sales right. velocity in the, the way everything, you know what I mean? So right. that energy gets projected to the outer world, to the customers, right. to other people who were recruiting, you know, and it's right. just this crit, like you just see why the winners keep winning. It's like, it's yeah. magnetic and it keeps pulling people who know who have been in that environment before and want it again because it's like yeah. so lightning in a bottle. Um, yeah. Like I can't – if I just describe what I do every day, I'm so enthusiastic about it that I know that it's yeah. infecting people. Yeah. You know? Right. <laughs> like, and right. you can't bullshit that. Yeah. It's just yeah. like it's, – it's wild. But see, you know? but see the, the, the one piece that I will say that you, you said, which is like – where where it always boggles my mind is like you you said a comment right now right it was um all of a sudden i feel like the hot girl right yeah. after but then your next sentence was after 10 years of doing it right right <laughs> yeah and it and, but but the thing is and that's the thing which is like when we i feel like what happens sometimes is like when you're working at something for so long right you and you see these unlimited doors of opportunities you think it's all of a sudden but the thing is, is you've been building and every step you took is what's making that 
door opening glow more, right? And it's like, it was always, it, the doors were always there. You were just climbing to it. And it's like everything you worked on, you know, obviously some, some, some more uh, um, psychological shit. But like, I think when it comes down to it, it's like, I think we sometimes, sometimes discredit the growth and the, the, the journey we had because now you go and have this hockey stick. Right. And the thing is, is, is like, you still have to learn how to play hockey to have a hockey stick growth, totally. you know, and it took years for you to do that. So like, it's just like, I think when you, when you, when, like when I had my first conversation with you as like your journey from get emails and now to this, it, it wasn't, you, you didn't stumble upon something. You, no. you built this, you know, I mean, my um, podcast and, is called 10 years in the making, right? For this exactly. reason, literally <laughs> exactly. And everybody exactly. I have on totally relates right. to, you know, the title. They're like, of course, exactly. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, it's uh so yeah, no, I, I just find that part. Like, it's like, you may think you're a hot girl all of a sudden, but you've just been, you've been doing every piece of plastic surgery you can to become the hottest girl out there, you know? So, and it's like, right. it takes years and years to become perfect. So uh, I, I always find that to be fascinating. Indeed. Um, so where do you see yourself in five years and what's your ultimate sort of, what is the, yeah, let's, what about like five years and then like, what do you want to be doing in like 20 years? Yeah. Um, five years. Um, I want to focus on, um, being able to make the world a smaller place. Um, uh, high level so like high level i just i feel that everyone that is working on something whether it's a brand or a SaaS piece of tech um i feel that in the middle are all these consumers right and 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 brands um uh, and 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 people and founders and stuff i feel that we have a way to enclose this ecosystem and almost weed out what isn't going to work and and give a chance and almost it sounds weird but i want to monopolize a lot of what we're trying to do like what shopify did with building websites okay i believe and what clavio is doing with email or, or you know i believe that we can get to a point where we can do more we can get to a point where more and more things become very prudently the only way to do it Right. right. And I feel like I can help get things to there. I know it's a very like lofty and sought out goal, but I just think that if I can, if I can pull more things into the center, then you're going to see a lot more similarity in what's working for everyone. Um, and I, and I think that we're getting closer and closer to seeing that. And, and that's why you go to these seminars or you go to these events and dinners and stuff, because you're trying to really find where one thing I've always learned is what people are, even while you're doing a keynote speech and all these things, people are trying to find out what you're doing. Right. right? And so if more and more people are starting to do the same stuff, how do we make that dramatically more present? And, uh, I would love to work on that. Uh, yeah. I don't know how. I don't know yeah, how. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that's what I want to do, though. Totally. And uh, twenty like years from now, playbook. Uh, not it's not the right word, but like it here is be. how here is right how word. you do this, right? Like here's it, how it's done. Uh, yeah, and, fail and, safe or whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and and twenty years from now, I think the the biggest piece that I'd like to do is, is is I love I love the side of like being able to help people. Um, avoid mistakes. And so I, I know I hate the word consulting, um, mm -hmm. but like I, I would love to continue to help people avoid mistakes. And I want that to be the title. Like I help avoid mistakes. And yeah. I, the biggest thing is, is if, if you're going to pay me, I always want to pay myself through money. I save you. Right. So that's like the mentality. And like, if I can become that in 20 years is a person who saves money, pays for himself and helps you avoid mistakes. That's what the ideal title would be. Incredible. So what are some of the best DTC tech play like tools that you think people don't know about in the market right now? Yeah. Um, I think there is, um, outside of retention.com, which, you know, uh, going through it, um, yesterday with Clint was it just incredible, right? Um, oh, man, uh, so, for, it's, it's so powerful <laughs> for us to have like 24,000 emails in less than what 12 days 
that we were not going to get. Like, I don't even, I don't even know how to, like, I was still fat. Like, I was like, wait, I should be building whole new series for the, it was, it was, it was too powerful for me to, to, to understand like how much impact this is going to create. And besides knowing how much revenue it's already generated, right? The impact is much bigger than the revenue generated right now. So I mean, um, and, this is like Ryan, Ryan Pamplin from Blendjet. He speaks on panels. Yeah. He's like, guys, like, I like I literally like this is half my revenue and I have a nine yeah. figure annual business. Like, I don't know what else right. to tell you. Like, and he's yeah. like, if you are not yeah. using this, like you are leaving money. He's and like, I love the way like, Ryan talks. Too. It's yeah, just he, like, he's just like, yeah, he just can't even it. explain how valuable yeah. it is. You know, it's like, guys, like, yes. listen to me. Yes. Like, I'm doing this better yeah. than anyone. And like, this is half of my strategy. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's insane. Um, and so I'm, I'm like thrilled for this and, 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 and even bringing some of our mentor past clients and stuff on it um, very soon. But outside of that, you know, I look at this as like, um, if you break down your PL, okay, each part of your PL has tech that can, can make it better, right? So, like, yeah. when I look at, like, you know, like finance, I think Final Loop, like, AI is moving to a direction which we're not going to be able to stop it, right? So, why not start letting that? So, Final Loop in, 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 in bookkeeping, like automated bookkeeping, like, why wouldn't you want that? No mistakes, right. and it's live, live reconciliation. The, the, the other one, um, which I, I think is, is, is is pretty powerful um is retection um with subscriptions right um when you're looking at subscriptions and 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 instead of it just being hey subscribe and save the back end of what you can do to customers and help them like say hey i'm not just going to incentivize you to stay on i'm going to change the complete way you look at our brand right i'm going to let you pick this i'm going to give you this i'm going to maybe even uh, have you come down and meet the founders if you stay on for three more months like there's just so much creativity as it becoming a channel so i love i love um looking at that piece and then i think um one of the other pieces that i really love in the tech space is within finance there's so many tools to extend your runway for your business for marginal points instead of getting massive loans and then figuring out how to blow the money. Um, whether you look at Parker or Plastic, um, Plastic lets you pay any ACH via credit card for two points, okay? Yeah. Think about that. Like, if you have a credit card that gives you net 60 like Parker, you can use a Parker credit card with Plastic, right? For two points, you get 60 days on paying an ACH. So if you have inventory that's due and a bill that's due for, and they only take ACH for 100 grand, I can pay $102,000. Right. <laughs> okay. And get 60 days right. to figure out how to sell that inventory. Like, that's amazing. Use your brain, you yeah. know? So, like, there's so many tools <clears throat> now, um, you know, that I, I feel like each part of your business has to become optimized on. And then I think the largest tool um, that I feel is, is super powerful for us is, is something like a Shogun, which is the ability to create landing pages within seconds based off images of chopped up PSDs, right? So, like, you don't need to become a developer anymore. Right. You don't need a developer to put something out there. You can test the landing page now same day after your creator is done making it. So I, I just think there's, there's a lot. I could probably be here for another few hours talking about tools, but right. uh, I'll stop there. Uh, sweet, man. Um, well, we're coming up on time here. So how can everybody – well, actually, I'm going to do the final stuff that we do. If you'd write one thing on a billboard – what would it be? You'll never learn everything. Love that. Consummate student so of the, the game. Just, 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 <laughs> you got, yeah, there's yeah. no, there's no stop to this. So, uh, and then the final five, where do you live? New Jersey. Relationship status, family. M married with the infant. <laughs> And then who is the most interesting person you're following right now? Who is the most interesting person I'm following right now? Um, I'd have to say Bill D.S. Andro. Um, he is a roll up of different brands, but he's a CPA like me that came yeah. in the space and looked at everything in a very, very tactical way of, of I'm going to buy profit and I'm mm -hmm. going to keep rolling that up. And now his, uh, Roll up of element brands is uh, 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 nearing nine figures. Sweet, I'm gonna start following that guy. What's your favorite book? <laughs> um, Winning by Tim Grover. Love it. And then favorite vacation you've ever been on? <clears throat> I'd have to say Turks and Caicos. Rock on. 
Ron, thank you very much. Where can everybody find you if they want to hear what you're talking about, see what you're working on? Yeah, um, I, I think two places. Uh, Avi CEO on Twitter, um, and then just Ronak Shah on LinkedIn. Um, probably the easiest places, and uh, I'm pretty loud in both those places, so should shouldn't uh, shouldn't be too hard to find. Awesome, dude. Thanks. This is great. Amazing. <laughs> no, thank you.